Final Fantasy VII Rebirth has been making quite the buzz in the gaming community. Its official release date, February 29, 2024, was unveiled during the September 2023 PlayStation State of Play event. This revelation sent waves of anticipation among fans. In the lead-up to its launch, they've given us a glimpse of tantalizing new gameplay footage. All things considered, this title is shaping up to be one of the most eagerly awaited releases on the PS5. Hang on to your buster swords because we're busting out all the recent revelations about Rebirth. And so, without further ado, here are the 5 things you should know about Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. 1. Story The storyline of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth isn't as clear-cut as you might expect. For those who played both the original 1997 release and the 2020 remake, it's evident that the two games featured drastically different storylines. Square Enix took the framework of the original and reimagined it for a new generation of players. This installment, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, serves as a direct continuation of where Integrate left off. It picks up with Cloud arriving at the village of Calm and Zack entering the Sector V church in search of Aerith. The narrative then unfolds as the party embarks on adventures beyond the boundaries of Midgar. Creative director Tetsuya Nomura has assured that players won't need prior knowledge of either the original or the 2020 remake to enjoy this game fully. The trailers and promotional materials have hinted at intriguing elements, such as Sephiroth's continued existence and the mysterious livestream, which is intimately connected to Sephiroth. Notably, the trailer alludes to significant events involving Tifa, raising questions about whether the game will follow the same plot as the original or venture into new narrative directions. As you probably know already, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is not a standalone game, but rather the middle chapter in a larger Final Fantasy VII Remake trilogy. Tatsuya Nomura confirmed that development has already begun on the third title in the trilogy. The development teams at Square Enix are employing an interconnected development structure. In other words, players won't have to endure a lengthy wait for the third installment. Considering how delayed their releases often turn out to be, this is very reassuring news. 2. Exploration the gameplay previews for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth has been quite extensive, starting from the Summer Game Fest 2023 and culminating in the September 2023 State of Play Showcase. First, let's get the important question out of the way. Rebirth may feature an open world, unlike its more linear predecessor. Throughout the recent presentations, we've witnessed Cloud and his party exploring even larger game environments. One standout feature is the return of the Gold Saucer, a location well remembered by fans from the original game. Here, players can engage in a variety of minigames to break up the core gameplay. In the latest gameplay trailer, we saw Cloud in action, riding a chocobo, participating in races, and even using a Segway. It's apparent that this second installment of Final Fantasy VII is broadening its horizons, promising an extensive playtime of nearly 100 hours, according to Square Enix. 3. Combat Furthermore, the trailers for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth have granted us a peek into the game's combat mechanics. Much like its predecessor, Final Fantasy VII Integrate, it seamlessly blends real-time action with strategic commands. In this journey, players will once again team up and fight alongside familiar faces like Barret, Tifa, and Aerith, along with new confirmed additions to the crew, Red XIII and Kate Sith. Red XIII brings a fresh twist to the gameplay with what's dubbed as the Revenge Gauge mechanic. This gauge fills up as he deftly defends against enemy onslaughts, granting players the ability to unleash various potent moves in the heat of battle. Kate Sith, the last confirmed playable character in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, stands out as a unique addition to the party. He's the sole mechanic character, embodying a robotic tuxedo cat that perches atop a mechanical mog, directing actions with a megaphone. The party encounters him during their visit to the Gold Saucer Casino and Amusement Park. However, beneath his charming appearances lies a mysterious secret that will soon come to light. In the original Final Fantasy VII, his second limit break allowed him to summon a magical slot machine to unleash potent attacks. These are all the known playable characters in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, featuring most of the original cast. The arrival of the final party member, Sid Highwind, is eagerly anticipated but has not yet been revealed in the remake trilogy. Additionally, given Zack Fair's increased prominence and the alterations made to Crisis Core's conclusion by Final Fantasy VII Integrate, there's speculation that he might make a return as a playable character in the future. Moreover, the game will introduce new synergy moves within its revamped battle system, accessible by utilizing a charged-up gauge, reminiscent of limit breaks. My guess is that these moves aim to underscore the bonds and connections between the characters. Rebirth takes character growth up a notch by introducing skill trees as a novel element. 
It brings in a slew of new materia and abilities to further personalize the combat experience. Lastly, in the demo, players get to relive the Nibelheim flashback sequence, a memorable moment from the original game. And what's interesting is that, just like in the 1997 version, you can step into Sephiroth's shoes during the sequence as you traverse the imposing mountains. However, this time around, you have complete control over the one-winged angel and his arsenal of overpowered Genova abilities. It's unclear whether he will only be playable during this segment of the game, but regardless, this is a very exciting prospect for fans of this iconic villain. 4. A next-gen experience Currently, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is exclusively set to launch on the PS5. This decision marks a departure from its predecessor, Final Fantasy VII Integrate, which initially graced the PS4. Square Enix has opted to bypass the older platform this time, concentrating its efforts on the new generation of gaming consoles. Nevertheless, there's a lingering question surrounding a potential PC release. While Square Enix hasn't dropped any official confirmation yet, the fact that Final Fantasy VII Integrate found its way to Steam suggests a reasonable chance that Rebirth might follow suit down the road. Now, for the Xbox crowd, things remain shrouded in uncertainty. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth currently wear the PlayStation exclusivity badge. However, the recent PC release of Integrate has kindled hopes for an Xbox Series X port. What adds to this glimmer of optimism is the impending arrival of Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII Reunion on Xbox One and Xbox Series X, hinting that Square Enix might be paving the path for a future launch of Integrate on Microsoft's platforms. The good news is that, when it comes to graphical fidelity, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is poised to deliver a breathtaking spectacle, thanks to the game being optimized specifically for the PS5. Square Enix has harnessed the capabilities of this next-generation console to craft an RPG adventure that's both functional and visually stunning. And based on the sneak peeks, the environments, character models, and cinematic sequences are well above the benchmark set by both its predecessor and Final Fantasy XVI. 5. Bonuses from Integrade If you've invested numerous hours into Final Fantasy VII Remake, it won't exactly provide you with a significant advantage in the sequel. In an interview about the Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, game director Naoki Hamaguchi confirmed that players won't be able to transfer their progress or character builds over from Final Fantasy VII Integrade. Each game in the Project Trilogy is designed as a standalone experience, with independent balancing. However, players who have saved data from Remake or their PS5 will receive summon materia bonuses, like Leviathan for PS4, PS5 saves, and Ramu for episode intermission DLC save data. While the Million Gill question, whether events will unfold as they did prior, remains a mystery, it's clear that Final Fantasy VII Rebirth holds many surprises in store for us. Well, that's all for this video. What do you guys think? This is Arihead, signing out.